<laughs> oh, look at all these people that are jumping in to say hey. So with uh, Hangouts going down, uh, we have to figure out something for Pocket now to uh, figure out what we're going to do for future streaming solutions and all that fun stuff. So uh, I'm trying out OBS. We're seeing how this works on um, sort of this live stream setup here. I'm breaking in a new web camera. I still don't think it looks great, but it's this new Logitech. And I'm on a, I'm on a new focus, right? So I'm trying to figure out my audio settings too. I have no idea if this is even, if this is even broadcasting right. <laughs> I'm not one to watch a live broadcast, but this just this once I'll make an exception. That's two, two puns in one. <laughs> so yeah, uh, we're we're trying to figure out what we want to do. The live chat is gonna make this uh, is gonna make this tricky because we really liked the Q and A feature in Hangouts. So we're gonna see what we can do to uh, to fix that stuff up too. And was this Leviu Danis? Hey man, you have the best camera reviews on YouTube. Keep it up. You know it. Um, I'm gonna be uh, breaking in the Honor, the Honor Eight. Although I don't know that I'll do a, a separate standalone uh, video for the Honor Eight. It's super similar to the P9, which is a good thing. But maybe we'll do a little refresh, or uh, maybe just do a follow up on that. Um, from, from fat produce. Indeed it is working. What platform is this? I just clicked on the notification. This is, uh, this is OBS, uh, or was it point fifteen point four? Um, running it on a windows rig. And like I said, I'm still trying to sort out some funky webcam issues and, uh, audio sync issues with my, uh, my focus, right? Cause it's, I'm pulling audio and video from a bunch of different sources, but this Logitech webcam looks cool until I actually throw it up on um, some kind of streaming service and then it looks like crap. Um, so we'll have to see. Audio seems to be sorted. I think I've got this focus right figured out. Um, the Windows 10 anniversary update totally hosed my old Firewire uh, interface. So that was really sad because uh, I'd had that interface for well over a decade and I loved that interface. Um, audio is weird for me. Vader 98924. Let me know what you mean by weird audio. Um, cause I'd really like to make sure we've got all that sorted. Um, is that the Surface Pro 4 on your shelf back there? <laughs> no, it's the Surface 2, not the Surface Pro 2, but that really terrible Windows RT Surface 2. Uh, Fat Prudus says, I say using Twitter for the Q&A keeps them shirt and to the point. We, th I think we might have to do the the hashtagery of uh, using social media for our uh, for our Q and A, but I want to still have something up on YouTube. The biggest problem with Q and As was that if you were streaming on YouTube, which is where most people would find something like that, you wouldn't be able to find the main conversation. So I think having the live chat up, if we get anything funny in the live chat, we can talk about it. But then for actual questions that we can easily sort and that we don't lose, I think Twitter might be. Uh, might be the right gig my right ear feels lonely what's up with the audio so that's one of the things that i need to sort like i don't know that obs can duplicate a left channel right channel so right now on a pro interface if you're using one microphone you're only sending a mono audio signal but for most stereo environments they treat that as the channel one is your left channel and channel two is your right channel so unless I set up a stereo mic'd pair <laughs> so that I show up on both, I'm not entirely sure how I'm supposed to duplicate that audio signal over both devices. So again, like I said, some some silliness, some funkiness. I've got to see what's uh, what what I can do to sort some of that stuff out. Rabe three, hi from Syria. Hello, Rabe. Uh, mono audio. You mean like you now? Uh, volume is really low. I have to put my phone at full blast to have a decent volume. That's good to know because I don't want to blast this out. I'm trying to make sure that if we need to do a recording so that I can capture the audio that uh, like I'm, I'm not sending out some really bad, funky, uh, funky distorted audio. Because again, ultimately what we want to do is be able to capture all of this so that we can produce a high quality audio version of the podcast at the end of the day. DOA salesman, double barrel microphones. I mean, with with this uh, this killer SM57, that is the presidential package 
That is the Statesman package of microphones. This is a microphone that I want to say the SM57 was released in the late 60s. I want to say 1967. Someone will probably Google that real quick and tell me how wrong I am. But when you look at uh, live events, live, uh, live speeches, and especially live political events, you will very often see this combo of microphones in a stereo pair to mic heads of state to uh, you know it was it was the presidential package i don't know if they're still using it but i, I remember even as uh, as late as a uh, uh, w president uh, bush's terms he was using this this microphone in a stereo pair for his live addresses uh make your audio test just you saying dank memes uh, it's a nice mic, this sound without any editing. Well, I mean, this is a live broadcast, so I can't edit anything. What we've got here is an SM57. This is a dynamic microphone. It's around a $100 mic um, being fed into a Cloudlifter CL1. And that's a line activator which takes phantom power and boosts the gain. Uh, it's a clean gain boost on a, a, a mic that doesn't require phantom power. So you feed it phantom power. It gives you about a 20 dB boost, and then that's being fed into a Focusrite 6i6. And I went with the 6i6 as opposed to the 200 series focus rights because I wanted that extra gain. This is a pretty loud interface when you really crank it up, which is good for spoken word. Um, it's one of my problems. I know a lot of people are out there recommending like the 2i2. That's a killer interface for like, what, 120, 100 bucks, something like that. But it does have a lower signal to noise ratio and the mic pre's just don't get quite as hot. Now that's that's fine for producing music. I mean, when you're using the human voice as a singer, that's really loud. But um, for spoken word, and as you can hear right now, because I'm still getting over this head cold, uh, we're not using the human instrument to its fullest capabilities. So I want something with a little bit cleaner gain, a little bit lower noise floor, so I went ahead and splurged on the 6i6. Uh, works good for me using headphones. It's good. Uh, Joseph... Joseph Nevin. Hey, Juan, love your camera reviews. Hey, Joseph, love your comments on my live stream. Um, Juan has a secret prototype of the V20. Don't worry, your secret segment with me. I wish. I wish I had one. I wish I had one so bad. That is that is my last big, hot, um, anticipated phone for the year. Is there a camera review coming for the Note 7 soon? So we will be working on a Note 7 camera review, but Jaime Rivera um, won't send it to me because he's not quite done with it. And uh, none of our PR contacts have any review units out. Samsung's being a little stingy with that. So as soon as he's wrapped up on his end, if I still don't have one from another source, then I will. he will send me the Note 7, but it is going to be a little bit uh, a little bit late. Bush used that model. Gross. Uh, it's not just Bush. I mean, it's the people who mic the president. So don't hinge a microphone purchasing decision on whether or not you liked one administration. And I'm pretty sure I've seen Obama um, use uh, the SM57 in a mic'd pair too, but I can't remember when, when exactly the last time it was. Uh, let's see. Juan, do you speak Spanish? Would you do a video in Spanish with Jaime? Um, so I come from a very integrated Hispanic family uh, that they tried to breed out in my grandfather's era, all of that Mexicanness and Hispanicness. So uh, we don't really speak Spanish. And then also coming from New Mexico, what you speak is a very localized and regionalized Spanglish. Um, so I would never subject uh, international audiences to my absolutely terrible Nortano um, accent, and uh, I, I try not to inflict it upon other people. Uh, why is Google getting rid of Hangouts? Oh, where did that comment go? See, this is why I don't like the Q&A. You guys are asking some great questions, and it's tough for me to kind of keep these all in place. Why is Google getting rid of Hangouts on air? Because... They're Google, and they've got a very strange strategy going on with their video streaming uh, solutions right now. And I think they're kind of scrambling to make up some of the uh, ill will from their gamers, uh, the gaming situation, when uh, all of those gaming companies were going nuts and, and uh, sending takedown requests to people who were broadcasting games. And then Twitch came up, and people started using Twitch instead. And... This this uh, this new era of live streaming video, once we saw what happened with Periscope and Meerkat, kind of caught Google by surprise. They didn't have a good solution in that space. And so Snapchat and, Snapchat and Instagram are starting to pull more eyeballs for this sort of short form consumer uh, consumer created content. And now they're trying to reconsolidate all of their apps and services. I don't know exactly what their strategy really looks like though, because after playing with Duo, I'm not quite sure 
that we see those teams at Google working together on saying like this could be our platform and this could be how we fulfill these roles. Um, instead, uh, you know, instead we're we're kind of getting this mess of different projects and different pieces that kind of come together in very strange ways. Uh, do you plan on making a review about the new Xiaomi? Xiaomi? I don't know how to pronounce that. I think it's Xiaomi, right? The Redmi, the Redmi Pro. That dual camera setup seems nice. I really want to get my hands on one. We we put in some feelers for uh, what was it? The Xiaomi uh, Note Three was that the last one that came out? The one that had the Qualcomm Eight Twenty. Uh, see, and again, like I'm so unfamiliar with this brand, I I don't really I, I'm not really up to date on on what they're releasing. So absolutely, I would love to. Um, but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not quite sure. We don't have one on the schedule. We don't have one coming to us in house. So unfortunately I, I don't know if we'll be getting to that. If, if, we, if at all, if we'll be getting it to it anytime soon. Um, let's see, let me scroll back up. How long does it take to make one review? The mythical snake. So, um, first of all, if I'm talking to a talking snake, uh, being a somewhat atheistic individual myself, that would be excellent evidence for changing my entire world worldview. Um, one review, it kind of depends on the device. It kind of depends on what we expect the consumer demand will be. I mean, we are a business too in trying to fulfill what we think our audience is going to enjoy. I think the fastest I've ever been able to knock out a competent review is six days. Uh, and, and that's if I get to focus on just using the device and I'm not spending extra time on doing unboxing videos, comparison videos, 48 hours with this phone, second impressions, things like that. I think the, the absolute fastest I can knock out a review that I feel is truly representative of what it, ta of what it, it, it feels like to use that device is around six days. Um, a big part of that for me is always spending at least uh, two days doing nothing but shooting on that camera and so uh for the premiere phones that we've been reviewing and and i really do want to try and extend this into more of the budget phones too like that sub 400 hundred dollar price point i think consumers still deserve to know how those cameras perform too uh it's just a tough call because you know a, a real camera review on pocket now what it was like the Huawei P9, I think, did something crazy like 300,000 views after its first week. Whereas, you know, if we spend the time to do an Axon or an Xperia and it only pulls 50,000 views and no one's really sharing it, then it makes it harder and harder to justify why we should spend that much time going deep and really trying to examine what those uh, what those things look like. So, again, we're still trying to sort out what our format is going to be at Pocket now. Um, I'm really hoping that we can start developing more collaborative content so that maybe it's not just me doing all of one thing, um, me doing all of the videos on one phone, that maybe we can bounce back and forth between the different producers and editors at Pocket now. Um, let's see. <laughs> Murtaza. Mega Pickles! I love watching people get their undies in a twist when I say Mega Pickles on Pocket Now. That audience has no sense of humor. I love it. It is so funny to me. It's like an Andy Kaufman exercise in seeing who really watches our videos and who's just some tech poser who SEO'd their way into finding this video and wanting to talk crap about the way that we did the review. Uh, what do you do with older used smartphones care to help a brother out? Call me Gabe. I wish they could. Um, most of the phones that I get actually do need to go back to PR manufacturers at some point. So I've got a pretty decent stockpile of older phones. A lot of those were sort of purchased uh, by PocketNow or by myself back when um, I was doing more content on this channel. Uh, but um, that's the uh, that's the gig is that usually you have to kind of keep those around because we still might go back and reference a phone from like two years ago and if we do then we kind of need to have that phone in stock um, ever heard of ASMR feels like this mic would be great for that ASMR someone spell out what ASMR is because I don't know what that is um, James Blair Obama evened it out to neutral um, yeah, well, that's kind of sort of Obama's gig, right? Not like I want to get into too much political discourse on this channel, but he was, you know, sort of a moderate when everyone was expecting him to be like mega liberal. Uh, is there any new member would join the channel from Rabe? I don't know if we've got anyone else coming in to uh, to hit that. Edward Maudlin punched the volume about 5%. All right, let's see what happens. I'm going to dial that up a little bit more and let me guys know if I just blew out all the people that had their volume set when it was lower. 
fat produce are you keeping safe with all of the wildfires so we're in between wildfires thankfully at the moment or at least in this neck of the woods so uh um i've been doing okay there but it definitely hasn't been helping just because we've got a ton of smog and a ton of smoke up in the air very disappointing uh to read uh, recently that california air quality is starting to uh get crappy again um, just from all of the uh, population influx. And for, for a number of years, we were doing really well and kind of cleaning up the air and gas prices were high. So people were out there buying more fuel efficient vehicles. And of course, as soon as like gas dropped back down below three bucks a gallon, everyone kind of went back to their same old bad habits. Um, uh, Apurbo, Harambe, Deepak, volume too low. Praja, excited about the upcoming LG V20. I'm super stoked to see what the LG V20 might be. The V10 was my favorite phone of last year. So LG, I'm, I'm trying to keep expectations in check, but I doubt I'll be able to. Um, what do you think about Apple calling its stores Apple instead of Apple Store? You know, James, uh, I don't care. I don't think consumers are going to care. I think most people look at the Apple logo and see Apple Store. So changing the name, whatever corporate ledger, whatever branding exercise they're trying to engage in, is, uh, is kind of silly. Uh, V20 will be a beast. I so hope it will be. I mean, really, you could have just taken the exact same shell of the V10, given it a larger battery, and popped in a Qualcomm 820, and I would have been happy. Um, I, I will miss, if it if the renders and the mock-ups prove to be true, I will miss the, uh, the stainless steel rails, because those just look sick. Um, Fat Produce, can you ask Jaime if the Note 7 has the raw camera toggle in the settings? Oh, it does. It absolutely does. It's just in a slightly different location because they changed up the format of the camera app. But if you go into the uh, the pro mode, there is a separate menu setting for how you can toggle raw capture. Um, I did get to find that. Unfortunately, I didn't mention that during our camera tour on the uh, the uh, Pocket Now channel. Uh, Erickson Films, are you familiar with the CAD E100S? I am not. Uh, I actually haven't recorded on many CAD mics. Um, I've got a mic locker over here in the closet next to me full of AKGs, Neumanns, and Blues. I've got some funky ribbon mics. I've got a really cool vintage AKG D202, which is a Sinterk bronze nose cone of a microphone, but I don't get to use it very often. Uh, from, from Rachi. Rachi Siders, I probably just mispronounced your name. Do you have any hope that Nokia will port the 41 megapixel sensor and give it a wider f1.7 aperture with today's technology running on Android? And um, so I'm, I'm a little, there, there's a little conflicting, you know, hope for, for what uh, Nokia might do. Pretty confident that they're going to be using a half inch, somewhere in a half inch sensor, like one over 2.6 to one over 2.3 for whatever first generation phone. But I do hope that we see a return to that two third inch sensor. Now, with that increased sensor size, we don't necessarily need to start pushing beyond F uh, F2.0. I'd actually prefer them stay F2.0, maybe even F2.2. That increase in sensor surface area changes the focal length of the camera lens, and that has a very noticeable effect on your depth of field blur. It would it would be if you if you used a two third inch sensor with an f one point eight aperture, it would be even shallower than what we see from the Galaxy S seven. And if you're a macro shooter, the Galaxy S seven is actually a tricky phone to use. It's hard to get something close up on the lens at that minimum focusing distance. Uh, and have the entire object be in focus. You really do start losing focus fast, and I think that would actually be um, a detriment if we had a two-third inch sensor with an overly shallow or an overly wide aperture. So, and also the extra surface area will make up any difference in capturing light. So um, we we shouldn't be too concerned. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, I'm still working off. I'm still working on these meds. We shouldn't be overly concerned with the aperture number when we're talking about sensor size differences. Now the other the other wrinkle to that might be whether or not Samsung can get off their ass and actually deliver a two third inch sensor too, because that could be a really interesting fight. Is a is a proper returned Nokia device against a a, 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 a newer Samsung two third inch sensor. Uh, from Georgie, what camera gear do you use? I use a Samsung NX30, which I need to replace. That thing is starting to uh, to burn out on me. Uh, there are two memory cards that it just won't uh, won't recognize anymore, and I start getting these really rainbow um, color pattern uh, distortion effects uh, when I'm shooting video for too long, and like once it starts running a little warm. 
So I think I might go to a Sony. I still haven't made up my mind yet. I was really hoping that by now we'd have some cameras with H.265 compression shooting UHD at 60 frames per second because I don't want to lose 60 FPS for showing off uh, phone interfaces. Uh, what I like about your reviews is that you use charts and real tests, not just reading spec sheets and saying dope. You know what I really hate is the number of YouTube channels that are all now sort of aping MKBHD. So, you know, it's like it's a nice phone. It feels really good in the hand. Um, everything's cool. It's, uh, you know, it's got a good camera. I'd say it's probably like a top five and the audio's good. So that's like top five. The camera photos, you know, like they're saturated and they're colorful, but they're not too saturated. And you can see some sharpening, but not too much sharpening. And, uh, you know, here's a picture of a Frisbee that I took and that's really cool. And the battery's good. You know, it's not great. It's probably like, you know, top seven for the battery. I won't, I won't put it in a list. So I won't say of the top five, like what those top five are. But if I just speak really non-committal and use a really cool voice and everything's cool and I don't get excited about anything, then everything, everyone just sort of feels good about that video and nothing is really controversial. And uh, then no one ever has to call me out on me having an opinion on liking one phone better than another. So that's cool and everything's great. So that's good. Um, that's not fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like not like I don't like pissing people off, but I like actually digging deep. So um, I'm going to continue doing that. Uh, let's see. How important is fast charging to you? Uh, fast charging, George, is super important to me right now uh, because we're still probably a couple years out from any major battery um, innovations and our ability to use our devices is going to get more aggressive. So, you know, we, we need a way to sort of top off consistently throughout the day so um right now i think we've all kind of agreed 3000 milliamp hour for a flagship phone is sort of the the norm uh it's it i would say it's probably the minimum these days and uh alongside that what i still hope that we'll see is further improvements to radio management not just well when you don't use your phone the phone goes into a better low power state um, I think we really do need to address that heartbeat, that connection between cell phone towers. Because, you know, you can take a, a really hot, powerful, brand new phone, throw it into airplane mode, and then kick on your Wi-Fi, and you get mm, remarkably better battery life and usage times. So I think there's a, a lot in radio management we still need to address. Um, let's see. Uh, from LG, from LGH, the Mi 5 has the 820. The Note series is a Redmi, which is kind of their budget series. They use the Helio P10. Oh, I haven't played with many Helios either. P10 in the Note 2 and the Snapdragon 650 uh, in the Note 3, all below $200. I mean, from what I've seen, they look like killer options. Uh, it's just getting them here has proven to be a lot more difficult than I would have assumed. Unicorn Workhouse, Unicorn Workhouse, say my name, say my name. So is there any new member? Um, let's see. Oh, damn it. See, again, like, I keep losing my place in uh, <laughs> in this live chat, and you guys are throwing comments in faster than I can respond to them. Um, ASMR is eargasms. I still don't know what that means, Unicorn Worker or You're going to have to give me more info than that. I see. So you do feed the trolls with Mega Pickles. It's not necessarily feeding the trolls. I mean, if if you follow this channel, my Some Gadget Guy channel, um, sorry, DOA Salesman, uh, the whole point behind me using, what is that? It's a malpropism where you say the wrong word um, was intentional because the whole, the whole commentary and the whole notion on that was resolution – isn't really one of the more important aspects of camera technology. I was getting into huge fights with people back when the HTC One M7 came out, because that was the best Android camera of that year. And its only competition was the Lumia 920. And the Lumia 920 aged better. It ultimately did become a better camera, especially you know for those poor One M7 owners who had to deal with purple fringe. But so many people were writing these bullshit editorials or these bullshit reviews about how, well, it's only four megapixels, and so it's just not as good as cameras with eight megapixels. And it was a, an important part of the commentary for me to ridicule that as a metric. And so 
for a lot of these things. If I, if I can't show some form of real world performance, I'm not going to sit there and say, well, like this phone has more giggle flips. So it's better than this phone, which has less giggle flips. And that's always to me been a hallmark of someone who is a shit reviewer or a lazy reviewer is that you just read the specs off the side of the box. You made an emotional decision based on that crappy info and you didn't really use the device. And so megapixels becomes a way to sort of ridicule that metric beyond and because you know we've already had discussions sensor size, uh, aperture, the uh, the focal length of the lens, um, the image processing, the software. I mean you know Sony. Uh, I, I just put up the uh, the Xperia X performance review. That is an amazing camera sensor. It really is remarkable what Sony's done there with uh, that resolution dense uh, that resolution density. The the software and the rest of the phone hardware completely fails. Um, that phone. And it's just a, a supreme disappointment to know that the hardware is way more capable than what Sony is able to get out of it. Um, I can't pronounce your name. Mor Morowski is the last name. Are you bald? I am not bald. Um, unfortunately, I do suffer from some pretty aggressive psoriasis outbreaks. I'm actually going to be seeing my dermatologist in, a, in another week or two, probably, unfortunately, when I get back from uh, IFA. And so throughout, I get some really bad scarring um, this is actually kind of calmed down, but you know, when I'm not sleeping, when I get sick, when I'm not eating right, um, that starts to look really gnarly up there. So, you know, I've always been a hat person. I enjoy wearing hats. I like hats. I haven't broken out my pork pies for a while. I should probably kick back to those, but this is, uh, this is how I kind of like to present myself these days. It's a lot less distracting for those times I have to put myself on camera. Um, Windows 10 versus iOS. I can't even answer that right now. I iOS 10, I, I like what Apple's trying to do to improve the functionality of it. It's uh, Windows 10, the anniversary update. We still haven't gone back to, to properly cover that on Pocket now. Um, again, it's another one of those issues where we just know we won't get a lot of a traffic on it. But the update was pretty substantial. I, it really fixed a lot of those usability issues that I had um, from the phone well after launch. Uh, let's see. <laughs> DOA salesman, Andreev, your headphones are on backwards. That is true because you should be hearing me in your left, uh, in your left channel. Um, can Honor 8 compete with OnePlus 3 and Axon 7? Deepak Murthy, it absolutely can. I'm, this is maybe going to be, the Honor 8 is maybe going to be one of my, my favorite happy surprises of 2016. Um, I've been enjoying the crap out of this phone. And uh, this is going to be a much more fun review to cut after all that time I had to slog uh, around with, an, with a Sony Xperia. Um, using speakers, still only one channel. Yeah, you know, speakers or headphones, you're probably only going to be hearing me on the left side. Uh, do you think the Moto G4 has been bastardized? That's an interesting, uh, that's an interesting viewpoint. I, I don't think so. I, I think the G4 is victim of the same situation that we see flagship phones falling prey to. When we see these tech improvements start pushing into lower price tiers, the old vanguard of products, the Galaxy S7s at the high end and the Moto G4s at the budget busting end are going to fall victim to that same competition. We should actually be kind of celebrating that Moto in a way, is forced to water down a little bit what made the G4 such a compelling and interesting option. Now, I think Moto Solution is is uh, is uh has a lot of merit, where you don't make just a Moto G4 and then you have two storage options. You've made the Moto G4 a spectrum of devices. So from 200 to, what is it, from 200 to 400, you've got options in there for how you might want to customize that, spending a little bit more here, you know, getting your fingerprint sensor on the front face, those kinds of things. I think they've got the right idea on. It's just, they're going to seem a lot less exciting because now we have a ton of phones from 200 to $400, which are all really good. Um... Yeah, and Praja, that's exactly the point. Phones are getting so good at everything that it's going, it's getting difficult for them to stand out any innovative ideas. So for me to soapbox for just a second, I think it's time to start killing the smartphone as the major screen we interact with. I think it's time to start peeling pieces back off of the phone to diversify how we interact with specific apps and services. I think face computers, I think smartwatches are a step in that direction. I like wearing a smartwatch because it peels the notifications off of my phone. My phone can now stay silent and I get subtle and discreet pulses to my wrist and little extra things too. Like it's a, it's an okay pedometer. Nate. And I can voice respond to text messages. Cool. But the actual act of, of, 
taking one of the most important aspects of my phone, how it notifies me to changes in my digital environment, that to me was a valuable way to separate that from the main body of the phone. And it has radically changed how I interact with my phone. So if we uh, if we look at products like, um, I'm gonna keep plugging LaForge eyewear. I think it's a delicious pun, uh, not maybe a pun, but reference to Star Trek The Next Generation. And if I could start getting some of that info in a heads up display, which just looked like a cool pair of glasses, not like Google Glass, that would be another step in the right direction. And once we start incorporating augmented reality into more displays and products like heads up displays and car windshields or wearable face computers then i think it's game over for us really caring all about just the phone then we become a walking personal area network and we have very specific ways to customize that experience for the types of services that we interact with specifically and so what I wear and walk around with will be totally different than what you wear and walk around with. And there's still plenty of room to improve other things too, just like audio. I think um, our improvements to audio have been kind of slow going and we've been focused so intently on making these things crazy powerful and we're all sort of staring at the world through these little glowing rectangles that we have to hold up to our face and walk around like this at bus stops. Um, it'll be nice from an evolutionary standpoint for us all to kind of get away from that and start standing up straight and walking straight again, not like I'm slouching in my chair right now. Uh, you guys should start a photography contest once a week, either here or on Pocket Now from Mur Murtaza. Um, we've toyed with that. It's just hard to coordinate and organize, and we really do need another team member if we're going to start playing into some of that other stuff. I, I'm sad that we haven't really been doing a great job of covering accessories. There have been some really cool um, case solutions, uh, camera solutions, uh, battery packs, things like that, that I really feel we should be doing a better job of talking about. Um, from Fat Produce, do you think that Android could be a feasible operating system for mirrorless or DSLR cameras? Well, we tried it. Sony tried it. I mean, no, Sony. Samsung tried it with um, the Galaxy NX. And really, I think it's too cumbersome. When I'm, when I'm holding a mirrorless camera and I'm focused on that camera shooting experience, what I really want to do is focus on that experience. Like, I don't want that to also have access to notifications or distract me with other inf information. And Android is just sort of overkill. For that you know it's moving from a galaxy nx to an nx30 it it, it really did it, it performs better and there's less processor overhead everything works smoother and i don't have to worry about that android jank in a device that really shouldn't have the processing power for running the os all of that processing power should be going towards image processing so really, I think the best of both worlds is to have some sort of phone or tablet solution which can connect to that camera over Wi-Fi. The thing that's been troubling me is that a number of those solutions, because you're connected over some kind of wireless standard, will force a limit on the, the video or photo recording capability. So like on my NX30, and I hope this is improved with newer Sonys, for example, but on my NX30, when I do a live video stream from the camera to the phone so that I can use the phone as a viewfinder, it automatically stops me down to 1080p at 30 frames per second. I can't shoot 1080p at 60 frames per second. So I can't really use that as a full-time solution. Uh, missed these Friday Q and A's. You should bring them back. I, I keep toying with it, but man, my editorial schedule at Pocket Now is pretty rough. Uh, KS videos. I saw your Sphero 2.0 unboxing. I'm still stoked about that video. Um, so I was I was the sound guy on set for Sphero. Did a whole bunch of videos with like Grant Imahara um, and a bunch of other sort of web liberties and uh, people that I, you know, I, I, I've worked with in the past. Um, I, I've done a couple shoots with Grant Imahara now, which is kind of funny. Uh, so I was a sound guy. Um, you won't see me in any of those, but the reason why you can hear those actors is because I had them on lavaliers and I was swinging boom microphones around that, that space. So I'm talking to the PR people, I'm talking to one of the agents who was repping all of those, uh, those web liberties. And uh, I was like, oh, yeah, and I've got my own YouTube channel, and I'm doing all this stuff, and I'm doing tech. And he's like, okay, cool, whatever. You know, like, when you've got a billion Twitter followers, give me a call. And he totally shuts me down. So I'm pissed off about that, and I'm playing around with one of the Sphero's just because, you know, we've got a little downtime in between shoots. And I talked to one of the Sphero people, and they're like, 
oh, yeah, well, here, just have this one. And we're like, okay, cool. What's the embargo? And he's like, oh, yeah, just don't post, post any videos until, like, a week later. And I'm like, awesome. So I shoot all this stuff. And, you know, like, that, that video was really early on on my channel for Gadget Guy. And I put it all together. And I hit the embargo. And my video destroys what they did with Grant Imahara and all of the other sort of uh, YouTube, uh, YouTube celebrities. So that was that was a fun like kind of at the the guy who shot me down. He's like, I can't rep you because you don't have a million Twitter followers. So that sucked. Um, LG LGH. Uh, hold on, let me get back. Um, da, 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 da. LGH. I don't expect anything from the new Nokia phones. They aren't actually Nokia phones. The Chinese HMD Global bought the rights to use the name, but then again, Alcatel worked out. So just maybe. Um, so that's what's that. That's what I think is going to be interesting is if Nokia Finland is really designing the phone and is instrumental in the QA, kind of like Apple and Foxconn, then I think we could see something interesting. If this is just a branding exercise, then you're right. Then these are going to suck. Uh, Praja, that impromptu MKBHD wannabe accent. How how tiresome is it watching all of these people up on MKBHD's nuts? I'm serious. I like that dude is the best overview guy on on the game. Don't come to me with MKBHD video reviews trying to talk about specifics, trying to talk about specs, trying to talk about benchmarks, trying to talk about real world experience. That's not what you turn to MKBHD for. If you want the prettiest, the crispiest looking overview, that's who you turn to. He's the only game in town. Now, if you want something hot, you want to know how a phone was really used, you, you want to look at unbox therapy. You want to look at flossy. Flossy, I mean, he's going to give you the straight dope. And so what I want to do is come in with some more tech. You know, like I want to come in with a few more technical specifications. I want to hit that audio harder. I want to dig in deeper on the camera. And that's why we stole real camera reviews. When Flossy Carter can do a, a 10 to 15 minute video just on the camera, I'll give him real back. <laughs> but until then, I'm keeping it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, do you think Apple will make a revolution in smartphone photography with a proper dual camera tech and hardware on their iPhone 7? Or more like iPhone 6SE? So you, you, if you guys have been following my channel, you guys know I'm personally not the biggest Apple fan. But there's still something. I used to be an Apple product specialist for a Department of Energy facility back uh, back during the old dual core dual socket g5 days and i loved those things those things were beasts water cooling as a standard workstation solution it was awesome uh i still hold out hope that apple can do something to surprise us i still hold out hope that they've been playing conservative with their hardware for so long that they could take a bigger jump i don't think it'll be the iphone 7 or this iphone 6se or whatever it's going to be called um what I, what I would hope to see from them is if they're not going to go with a larger camera sensor, uh, then that we see them do something really innov innovative with multiple camera sensors. And uh, it's the main drawback of the Honor, for example. Like, they figured out how to do dual 12-megapixel sensors that are larger than the 12-megapixel sensor in the iPhone 6S, and it's totally flush with the casing. And then we see these renders and mock-ups from the iPhone 7 where the sensor looks like it might be getting bigger, but the bulge is huge. It's so ugly. And then you go and look back at like what we had with the, the iPhone 5 and 5S. That was a gorgeously designed phone. That phone was beautiful. And they sunk that bigger camera sensor into the same form factor because the phone was just a little bit thicker. So I don't hold out hope, um, but I'm really, I'm really expecting, well, I don't have much hope for this next iPhone, this year's iPhone, but I'm hoping for next year's iPhone that we see another improvement to uh, 3D touch, that that force press gesture is incorporated to the point where we can get rid of the home button, and that we see them do something really substantial with multiple camera sensors or a larger camera sensor on some sort of iPhone Pro. But I I'm not really expecting that stuff to happen this year. I think this year will kind of feel a lot like last year. Uh, what are your thoughts on the boot loop issues on the last few LG devices? Everyone I know that has a G4 has experienced this. Fat Produce, uh, my my buddy with the G4 uh, went through this. So my sister-in-law, my wife, and one of my best friends all had LG G4s. And my buddy, his G4 boot looped. My wife, doing fine. My sister-in-law, doing fine. So I'm doing one out of three. 
and that's still pretty terrible. Thirty <laughs> percent. Um, that's not a good score for LG. I thought really the biggest problem was LG's response. LG did not respond well to that issue. So if they had gotten on top of it, gotten out ahead of it, and made a lot of better good faith uh, attempts at solving that problem, we'd have been fine. I, I think the fact that they uh, they backed off the way they did left a lot of people in the lurch. You seem to have the ability to come up on the spot with hip terms. How are you not working at Apple yet? <laughs> Giggle flips. Well, Praja, like I said, I never worked for Apple specifically, but I did use, used to manage uh, part of a tech contract for DOE facilities in New Mexico, and I was an Apple product specialist for that. Um, let's see. From LGH, what can Sony do to improve their software? Hire better software engineers. Why haven't they? Any chances to ask them about it? Sony doesn't respond to any type of query like that. And if you want the, the inside baseball, they are a very proud and very walled off company. And I think they're playing super conservative since the hack. Um, that they are not talking to anybody. They are not giving out any proprietary information. And they are releasing the products in the way that they, seem, they, they see fit. Um, so there's no word out from there. The impression that I get, and this is mostly wild speculation, is that the internal function at Sony seems to resemble Microsoft during the early Balmer days, where all of these different departments were individually successful in their own right, but they were highly competitive against each other internally. Because honestly, I think the best thing Sony could do would be to turn over all of the phone camera tech to their mirrorless camera department say this is the phone go nuts because sony camera division is very successful so why wouldn't we want that polish that magic on a sony smartphone but they their departments don't work that way look at how long it took them to figure out how to do a tie-in with sony phones and playstations and how few how few people really get to fully partake of that when you know old fogies like me are still rocking ps3s um, DOA salesman gotta go hope to catch you live more often I hope to be streaming live more often uh, does Galaxy Note have expandable storage the Note 7 does uh, need another associate I might know someone uh, what's the best smartphone of 26 for you so far so that's really tough and I've never been good at answering that question I really do think that where is it the best all rounder is probably the Galaxy S7 um, S7 and S7 Edge, depending on what your you know, sort of hobbit hand size might be. Uh, but that being said, I think HTC has had better audio. So if you're really into listening to music, then I would go with the HTC 10. And um, if you don't shoot a lot of video, I still think there's a lot to like about phones like the Huawei P9 and the Honor 8. That camera is just remarkable for still photography. I absolutely adore it. And it's largely replaced how I used to carry like a backup phone. Um, if I know I'm going to be shooting video, I'll still rock in the LG V10 just because the video settings on that are formidable. But I no longer pick up a Lumia 1020 for my backup photography solution. Um, I really have come over to the Android side almost completely for both my main, my main phone of the day, which is the phone I'm reviewing, and then my backup phone, which is the phone that I can make sure I can still do all the stuff I need to get done. Um, in a... Oh, where is it go? Uh, do you think? Oh, there it is. Uh, Live, Live you, do you think Google should screen the apps more aggressively before publishing them to the store, kind of like Apple does? Um, no, actually, I don't. I actually do kind of like the fact that the Google Play Store is a little is a little bit looser. Um, as long as they have some kind of a reasonable solution for security and making sure that uh, permissions are clearly clearly expressed and the app isn't doing anything funky in the background, I'd kind of like to have something that's a little less uh, of a tight grip. Again, every platform's greatest strength is going to be its biggest weakness. And the way that Apple engages in some of their policy on, on censoring apps, for example, I think is um, woefully inconsistently applied. So... If the problem is potentially censoring some apps which don't really deserve it or having a slightly wider ecosystem with some apps which might not be very well optimized, I'll take I'll take the less censored approach. Uh, Damir Frank, since when is this on and what exactly is this? So I've been talking, what is this, 40, 40 minutes? Uh, I was just testing. I was firing up OBS like you recommended and uh, just kind of messing around. And I don't even know if I'll keep this live on the channel. 
Um, fat produce, mirrorless versus DSLR. What's your preference? I'm still old school enough that I like DSLRs. I like the actual mirror in there, um, especially when you're looking through the optical, the eyepiece. I like having a better sense of the actual light that's traveling through the lens hitting my eyeball. Um, but the realities of where this, this business and all of this is going, when you're actually out and about carrying a slimmer, lighter weight camera is really nice. I don't break out my 7D quite as often as I used to. It's just when I know I'm going to be in slightly more rugged conditions because my Samsung is not very ruggedly built. Um, when I know I'm going to be like, you know, in wet or rainy conditions or if there's a fear like I might drop the camera or have a really challenging shoot that way, then I'll break out the 7D. But for most other things now, I've, I've properly switched over to mirrorless. Um, older phones at discounted prices or less expensive newer phones. Last year, I would have said older phones. This year, we have had such an incredible crop of $400 smartphones. OnePlus 3, the Axon, the uh, even the Alcatel. Where's my Alcatel? It's super dirty right now. Let me wipe it off. Um, with the exception of video throttling, um, the Alcatel is proving to be a, a reasonable solution at this price point. And then again, like I said, my, my new little sweetheart is going to be the Honor 8. And I'm really stoked to be starting that review. So I, I think there's every uh, every opportunity now to pick up, if, if you're shopping around that $400 price point, these phones, I think, do a better job uh, than compared to last year's flagships. I think that's, that's an easier choice to make this year. Um, do, do, do. What do we got? Uh, older phones. Oh, here we go from Praja. Miffed that Sony makes a huge part of the smartphone cameras and quite a lot of OEMs get processing better than Sony themselves. Absolutely. I think that's been a consistent complaint from Sony phones for a couple years now. Their sensors are phenomenal. Every every OEM is using, uh, every top tier OEM is using a Sony sensor. So that's a huge bummer. Uh, from LGH, what do you think of the intelligent report that reported on the frequency of Android updates and how stable phones of the different manufacturers run? I need to read and read more about that. I only kind of caught headlines on that, so I don't know what that report concluded. I'd be very interested in seeing how they cite their sources on um, on how they cite their sources for what crashes and what stability issues, how those were reported. Um, that kind of stuff always makes me a little nervous when we're trying to claim that we've got one sort of, you know, bucket data collecting solution. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll have to look into that and maybe I'll try and mention that, uh, talk that up in, a, in next week's podcast. Uh, from, from, I, I'm sorry, I'm terrible at names from Hicham, the S7 or the Note 7. And that's a tough call. Um, I've kind of curtailed. I mean, from the Note 4, I was a huge S Pen fan, and I really haven't been using it that much. And I, I didn't really... After I smashed a Note 5 with a, a very simple drop at waist height, um, I, I haven't taken my replacement Note 5 out of my apartment. So uh, I've kind of gotten used to just not really doing much with the stylus. And uh, I, I think I would probably side... Me personally, I would probably side with the S7... Uh, largely because I like the form factor. It's a little bit easier for me to use the phone one-handed. Um, from Nathaniel Smith, what do you think of Samsung's phone reliability? I've had huge issues with both the LG V10 and the first-gen Moto X, and at this point, I've basically been thinking about the iPhone 7. So first of all, I think we're going to have to get over this notion that our phones really are built to last. Um, I don't I don't know that I've played with any phones in the last couple of years where I'm really confident that they're going to live up to long term usage beyond that sort of 18 month window of, of agreed upon warranty and software support. And the devices these days really do feel like they age out faster than uh, phones of previous generations. Um, for example, you know, like uh, this Galaxy, this Galaxy was launched when in March, something like that. I don't know. So I'm already having fingerprint scanner issues with my Galaxy S7, and then when you look at it, and you can see in my videos, you know, I'm not doing any funky torture testing, but occasionally this ends up in a pocket with keys or just with other stuff, and the, the cover that they have on the fingerprint sensor is already scratched to hell. You know, it's not, it, it, what, it's less than six months old. That doesn't bo bode well for how a six to $650 device, depending on when you bought it, a $600 device is going to age over time. 
Um, it's great. We've got all these really pretty phones. We've got all these glass phones, all these wonderful little attention to detail. But now I'm kind of in uh, of the of the mind that we should be shopping this out, knowing that you're probably going to want to replace it after 18 months, even if the phone is, is sort of like sold to be uh, a multiple year solution. I know consumers are holding on to their phones longer, but I, I, I think that as these phones start becoming more locked down, more glued shut, more materials like glass where it's harder to repair them, um, that that last six months of use is going to start getting more and more painful, especially as more aggressive software comes out. Um, let's see. Uh, doo, 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 doo. There we go. Does the HTC 10 actually use a different DAC from other SD 820, oh, Snapdragon 820 phones, or is it just the app that makes it sound louder, better? So, Samuel, that's been a topic of a lot of debate. Um, I don't know that, I, I want to say that there was a white paper published on the 1M8, which showed it using a Wolfson DAC. Someone is totally going to correct me on that. But I think most Qualcomm phones have actually used, uh, uh, most HTC phones uh, have actually used Qualcomm DACs. So the Qualcomm DAC can support, I think, up to a 32-bit high-res audio playback. Um, this is one of the things that bothers me. Um, I'm going to talk, I have a buddy over at GSM Arena, and I have to talk to them about how they do their audio tests. Because their frequency response graphs never show beyond 20 kilohertz. So if you do have a proper 24-bit or 32-bit playback, you should see frequencies above 20K. Anyway, um, that Qualcomm DAC should support those higher range frequencies. I think the problem that a lot of manufacturers run into is using a really shitty amp. So if you use a lower quality amp, it, you're not really getting out of that Qualcomm DAC what you could be. Um, so I think HTC's big strength, and if I remember correctly, starting with the 1M7 back when it was they were partnered with Beats, was that they had separated the amp from the rest of the logic board, um, the, the rest of the main board in the phone, so that there was less interference and they could produce a louder um, and punchier, a more aggressive audio signal from that. And I think the HTC 10 is doing something similar. I do not know for certain, and I haven't seen from the teardowns where we might have other gear involved in that chain, but I think that's the difference is HTC might not be using the bestest amp, uh, DAC, but they are using a very high quality amp. Uh, from Georgie, do you think we will soon see some big step up improvement in battery technology like in smartphones and electric cars? There was recently a, another post on Reddit, um, a company talking about how they had a, so, oh, a research team out of a university here in the United States that they had a solution for radically increasing the capacity of lithium ion, not lithium polymer, but lithium ion cells and that they had an expectation of a consumer facing release for drone batteries next year. So I think over the next three years, we will see steady improvement um, creeping up. Unfortunately, what I think this is gonna mean is for a lot of manufacturers, they might still stick with the same capacity, like a three to 4,000 milliamp hour cell, but then once you know it, they can make their phones even thinner. Yay! I think that's what's going to happen, and I'll be really bummed if that's right. Um, from Ericsson Films, OnePlus 3 as an upgrade from the LG G4. I think going from a, an LG G4 to a OnePlus 3 will feel like a lateral move. There are lots of pros and cons on both sides. I like the screen a little bit better on the G4. I actually do like the camera a little bit better on the G4. The audio on the OnePlus 3 is going to be way better. Um, I'm not impressed with uh, LG's uh, DACs and amps for their headphone jacks. So it's kind of a pick your poison sort of solution. Um, but I don't think it's gonna feel like a radical improvement. I think you're just gonna be trading your pros and cons. Um, which phone has the best speakers? The Axon, the Idol 4S, or what? So actually, I gotta say, I kinda dig HTC solution on the 10, um, where you have sort of, uh, the, the phone acts as like one big loudspeaker with a tweeter and um, a sub. <laughs> Uh, between the Axon and the Idol, I would definitely go with the Axon. Um, Demir, I, I don't know what you were referencing. I mean, 1080p 60, not 4K, so I don't know what that means. Uh, let's hope that manufacturers will keep the $400, or $400 phones updated as well as they do with their top tier phones. For, so LGH, I think that's one compromise that I think we just need to eat. Um, I don't know that we should expect the same 
software support from cheaper phones. I think that's one of the reasons why we spend more on a phone is better QA, better support, better warranties, things like that. I think that all needs to be built into the price of the phone. And I think that is one area where we should expect these phones to not perform as well. That being said, we just published a story on Pocket Now saying that Huawei is committing to a two-year upgrade cycle on all Honor devices. So while we might not get that expectation of a monthly security patch like Motorola used to do, we should still expect two full generations of Android on a $400 phone. Again, we're sort of trading stuff, but maybe, hopefully, fingers crossed, I don't know. Uh, Demir Frank, my Idol 4S had graphic glitches at 1080p 60 even when cold. If you're talking about when shooting video, I had a lot of issues with the Idol 4S while shooting video. Um, from Praja, one of your videos on the G4 convinced me to get one, but after hearing about the boot loops, I'm kind of glad I didn't. I know a lot of people are in that boat. My G4 is still kicking. I mean, it was one of the, oh, well, it's one of the South Korean models. So I don't know if that has any difference, you know, in terms of what they built or what kind of QA they had. But mine was doing fine. My wife's is doing fine. Like I said, my sister-in-law's is doing fine. I guess I could say that's 25%. If we count mine, my wife's, my sister-in-law's, and my buddies, then only 25% of the G4s all around me have gone into boot loops. And that's still terrible. Um, uh, from Mature Manure, wanted to say thank you. Really appreciate your videos. Thank you for watching my videos. Um, from Everin, what do you think so far about the Galaxy Note, the Samsung Note 7? Uh, I like it. I'm not blown away by it. I'm sad that the Note is no longer the Vanguard product, that it's now just playing catch up to the Galaxy S. But I think it's absolutely appropriately priced for what you get. And if you need those things, then it's the only game in town. If you don't need those things, then get yourself a Galaxy S7 Edge and you'll be well served by it. Um, what do we have here? What are your thoughts on the Note 7 Gorilla Glass 5? Okay, so from Fat Produce. So yeah, the, um, who is it? Jerry Rig Everything. Go watch Jerry Rig Everything's video on torture testing the Galaxy Note 7. And Gorilla Glass 5 is, is, again, we have to talk about compromises. We can't just make one thing better here and then have it still perform the same in other ways. So not to spoil his video, but in making a more shatter-resistant screen, the screen is less brittle, so it's less hard. Um, that means it's easier to scratch. And it looks like the Galaxy Note 7 will be easier to scratch with metal objects like keys. So um, you really want to be careful with your super pretty glass investment. That's also going to be super tricky is Jerry, Jerry Rig Everything recommends, well, just get a, a tempered glass screen protector. I'll be curious to see how good those screen protectors are if they do provide wraparound coverage on a curved screen. Um, I haven't seen any that do that gig well. Even on the Galaxy S7, um, a lot of people didn't realize that there is ever so slightly, you're not gonna be able to see this on my webcam, there is ever so slightly a curve, just a tapering to the side of this screen so that when you get a tempered glass screen protector, you slap it on there, there's this lip, which is excellent at catching pocket lint all the way around your phone, and that's a bummer. Um, Salad Tribe, best voiceover mics. Oh my God, there are so many. Um, so I use the SM57 mostly for its rejection, but it picks me up well enough. I like the SM57. I started on an AKG C414 uh, ULS. Um, that was one of the hard switch connector uh, microphones. I love that mic. The new ones, the XLSs are still very good. It's about a $1,000 microphone. In California, you'll see a lot of Sennheiser 416s. That's a shotgun. Probably have about another $1,000. A lot of people swear by Neumann. Um, the TLM 103 and the U87 are very popular. I think the TLM 103 sounds brittle. You need to pair that up with a really fat tube preamp, and at $1,000, I don't think it's the best investment you can make. Um, U87, I think, sounds better, but if you can get your hands on a well-cared-for U89 or TLM 193, I think those things are gorgeous. Um, and then you can play around with some other, some other manufacturers, too. I think Blue has some phenomenal solutions at slightly cheaper price points than what you can get from um, – what you can buy for a Neumann. Um, and then what's the last – oh, and then you can always go with a large capsule dynamic microphone like an RE20. If you want a slightly more radio-style sound, those things are baller. Um, 
Let's see. Tech AM. Hey, Juan, have you ever considered doing a studio desk tour and maybe a video on your workflow? I think that would be interesting. I actually had been planning on trying to do something like that. One of the things I was holding off on is I had this expectation that I was going to be swapping my camera. And then all at the same time, my webcam and my uh, audio interface died after the Windows 10 anniversary update. So I had to put a little money there. Um, I need to figure out what my new workflow is going to be once I replace that camera, though. Um, hey, Juan from iEdge, what are your personal thoughts about the Galaxy Note 7 versus other Android phones? Kind of already talked about that, so I'm going to move on. Um, Mythical Snake wanted to upgrade my Xperia Z1. Don't feel so confident about that now. I, I Okay. Um, well, watch my review on the Xperia X. Uh, I think there are better options out there. Spoiler. Um, project, can you recall what was your first phone and when did you get it? If not necessarily smartphone, mine was a Nokia 3320 at 18. So I was 18 and I had some weird, I think it was a Sanyo. I can't remember what it was. But then I quickly jumped onto one of those just generic Motorola's that you got from Cricket because I was a broke ass college student. And then uh, my first smartphone was the PPC 6700 on Sprint. And then I flipped that for a Touch Pro. Um, oh, and all this time I've always had PDAs. So I had Palm Pilots. I had a lot. I had a number of Windows Mobile, um, uh, win, uh, Pocket PC and Windows Mobile uh, PDAs. So I had a 3950, a 5500, a 2750, and a 4750. Um, I played with the 2250, the iPack, but I didn't keep that one. Um, and I'm sad because I, I sold my 2750 to buy my 6700, and I still wish I had that PDA. It was one of the third or fourth Windows Mobile PDAs that had a fingerprint sensor on it, so that's how you unlocked it. But I still hold the record for overclocking the iPac HX 2750. That thing was a beast. Um, uh, let's see. I would love to. Uh, oh, from from you know nice. I would love to upgrade to Note Seven, but that eight hundred and forty nine dollars plus taxes equals nine hundred plus, and that's a lot of ducats. Again, I mean it's an expensive phone, but you know you compare it. What's actually on that phone to a, an S Seven Edge, and I think you are getting your money's worth. What phone? in Samsung's lineup has 64 gigabytes of built-in storage, an iris scanner, and a waterproof stylus. The Note 7. Do you want a USB-C connector? The Note 7. You know, all of those things add up. And so when you really compare the pricing, especially once we get a month out from the Note 7 launch, and the prices are, will start to drop just a little bit like they always do on, on Android gear, I think the thing is totally appropriately priced. Now, the question you have to ask yourself is, do you need the iris scanner, the 64 gigabytes of built-in storage, and the waterproof S Pen? If you do not need those things, then you're going to be perfectly well served by a Galaxy S7 Edge. Um, let's see. From Deepak, even Huawei P9 Plus has awesome dual solution speakers like the HTC 10. I have it. We haven't gotten to play with the P9 Plus. They won't send us one. Uh, Note 7, can or are there any screen protectors that fit and work well? I don't know that we'll see any Note 7 tempered glass screen protectors that really work. I think we'll, we'll have to play with some type of silky plastic skin. Um, Demir Frank is here. Wow. Yeah, Deepak, you've got fans in my, in my live stream. I love it. Uh, I Edge, do you think the Honor 8 will be able to compete with great phones such as the new Axon and OnePlus? I kind of already talked about this. I think it absolutely does. It's just about picking your poison. I think the OnePlus is going to be the best all-rounder. I think the Axon is an amazing audio solution. And I think the camera on the Honor 8 is, uh, is kicking some ass and taking some names. Just, again, not necessarily for video. From LGH, Exynos versions of the S3 and Exynos versions of the S6 and S7 have a Wolfson DAC. Not sure about the Snapdragon versions. Pretty sure HTC has its own implementation for their One Series. I haven't gotten confirmation on what HTC is doing like that. Um, but I, I, I totally agree with you. If it's an Exynos chipset, then it doesn't have all of the stuff that Qualcomm builds into their chipsets. So uh, that's one of the reasons why I think the Galaxy S6, S6 Edge Plus, and Note 5 seem to produce much better playback numbers than the S7 and the S5 did using Qualcomm hardware. Whew. As a lot of numbers and dates and things to remember. Uh, from Praja, about Grant Imahara, did you do the sound for Myth Mother Mythbusters? No, I did not. I never got to work on Mythbusters, but I did send him a, a message to, what is it, the show that um, um, 
that uh, Jamie and Adam are doing on YouTube about maybe trying to do some tie-in. Because they've been doing phone reviews, but I think we do better phone reviews, so we should work with them on that. <laughs> um, if you really care about audio... Hold on, what do we got? Oh, damn it. I can't scroll smooth enough. Okay. If you really care about better audio, a separate MP3 player, even a 140 euro Fio X1 or Sony A15 will destroy the HTC ones. But I understand the convenience of having a, an average, an above average audio in a phone. It was, it was the LG V10. You know, it's again, it's all going to be compromises and you're absolutely right. If you want the best possible audio quality, then you need to carry around a separate lump um, or a separate brick or a separate uh, widget, gadget, thingy. I stopped wanting to do that, and the LG V10 isn't as good as a standalone Fio. It, it absolutely isn't, but it was good enough for me to not feel like it was a significant compromise in having that phone with me um, all the time. So, uh, uh, V20, do not like to see a repeated... Oh, from Adam ZZ 17th. Um, V20, do not like to see a repeated G5 from LG. Sorry for the rumor mill. Getting the V10 soon, though. So, okay, one thing, I, if you can, I would hold off on getting the V10 until we actually see what the V20 has to offer. If only, just so that you know, you'll also be getting the cheapest possible prices for the V10. Um, I think there's an opportunity here for LG to fix the issues with the G5. The biggest being... You cannot swap your LG friends without having to reboot the phone. If they can pack in just a small temporary battery in the V20, I'll feel a lot less angsty about a modular design on the V20. But that's also with the provision. This is a big butt. This is a big booty butt. Um, it needs to still be a ruggedized phone. I still want that mil, mil spec 810G drop in shock resistance. Okay, uh, my first smartphone. Uh, you know, nice. Thanks for reading and answering my comments and questions. Keep up the great stream and videos. You rock, dude. You rock, too. Um, what new technology do you want for the foreseeable future? This is from Behringerinjurenhein. I totally screwed that up. But Behringer, I mean, they make good audio gear, so part of your name is something that's recognizable to me. Uh, augmented reality. I want augmented reality on everything. I want augmented reality messaging. I want augmented reality mapping. I want augmented reality gaming. I want AR everywhere. I am so stupid stoked to start playing with, like, the new Lenovo's that are going to be coming out with Tango built onto the back. I want AR eyewear, I want AR windshields, I want everything AR. I want Terminator Vision 24-7. Uh, from Fat Produce Samsung, sh Samsung should convert the home button into a combined home, always on fingerprint scanner, and two-stage shutter button. I don't know how that would work. If you're pushing from the front of the phone as opposed to the, I guess that would just be a different muscle memory. I could see that. I don't know, I, I don't like it when companies mess with the home button, though, I, I think it's one of the, the smaller missteps. I think it's a misstep. It's not a deal breaker, but it is a misstep on the Moto. So when you're used to... God, there is so much dust in this office right now. Um, when you're used to you know, this being your home button and you see these two little dots on the side, you have this natural inclination to like reach for the back button down at the bottom of the phone or hit this to go home and then it turns your screen off. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> if it's a home button, it should just be a home button. From iEdge, do you feel like Apple is starting to slow down in terms of innovation? I think they've always been slow. I don't think Apple has been an innovative company uh, since the classic IBM power PC days. I, I don't think that's where they've been making their money, so I don't think that they've bothered to be innovative to any great degree. Uh, where Apple in the past, especially under Steve Jobs, uh, was was vital to the to the tech landscape, though, was in being... Um, ruthlessly aggressive about polishing the user experience. And ever since Siri and Apple Maps, that's not the Apple that we have anymore. They're, they're, this is an Apple that's perfectly fine in experimenting on their customers and using these apps and services as beta products, just like Google does. So there, I feel that there's a lot less benefit there. I mean, the first generation of Apple Music was pants on head stupid. So, uh, you know, there's a lot less of that benefit i think for apple consumers and i don't think they've realized it because it's been sort of a lobster pot effect that one of the things that that made apple products so compelling 
has sort of evaporated in the necessities to compete at the speed of which we see iteration in the Android ecosystem. Um, uh, from Stevie Ray. Yay, I haven't seen you in a live stream in a while, but keep up the great work, man. I haven't done a live stream like this in a long, long time. Uh, from Praja, what AR gaming product are you getting? Uh, well, there aren't any right now. I mean, the main one that I think we would all want to play with is something like HoloLens. That is such a compelling um, experience, especially if you've done any of the HoloLens product demos, like where things are crawling out of your walls and you've got blasters, you can shoot all this stuff down and then you can flip it and then just go up to a coffee table and launch Minecraft and have it just all over your living room, but perfectly tracked to everything in your living room. And so Project Tango is sort of like the cardboard, Google Cardboard version of what you could get with HoloLens. And they have this little dominoes game that is so stupid fun. You just paint dominoes all over your living room floor and you can set like little alien spaceships that will steal dominoes or drop things from great heights or you can launch a cow from a catapult and it just remembers it. So as long as you're pointing your phone around, you know, you can walk all the way around it just looking through your phone screen. So that's the kind of stuff that I think is going to be very compelling very quickly once we can get it into more phones, once we can have Project Tango hardware on more devices. Uh, I don't think you'll have to explain it to consumers. I think they're just going to fire up an app and be like, oh, well, this shit's awesome. And then you can just kind of go off and developers can start creating totally new experiences. One of the things that I would love to see is like a hologram video messaging service that's also location locked. So like I send you a message from the hilltops up here in Southern California and that message is locked until you get your ass out here and then you can see the message that I shot for you in 360 degrees in the location that I shot it. So it could be like, I am there with you, you know, stuff like that I think could be super fun and compelling. Um, M Rahil asks my age and I'm too damn old. Um, oh man, you guys are asking great questions and I can't find them. Uh, what about the Axon 7? Do you recommend it? What about its DAC? I'm loving, uh, this is from Usama. Usama? Um, what about the Axon 7? I think the Axon 7 is a great option. Uh, I think, you know, it, it's tough to say. I mean, it's trading a number of blows with the OnePlus 3. I like the screen resolution better. I think the OnePlus 3 is contrastier and more vibrant color saturation. The cameras trade blows back and forth a lot. Ultimately, I think I like the OnePlus 3 camera just a little bit better. But the audio on the Axon 7 is legit. That amp is punchy that is a very loud headphone audio phone this the, the front speakers are fine um they're good they're they're i shouldn't say they're fine they're very good um i'm just a lot less impressed with good hardware speakers and right now i've just like if i want to plug in a really nice pair of headphones i want to know that my phone can drive them and the axon 7 is one of is one of if not maybe the loudest phone that i've tested in our uh, headphone uh, playback tests. But of course, I, I've still got to do a few more tests on it. Once I get it back from Jaime, he was supposed to have it in the mail to me. Uh, it doesn't look like I'm going to get it back until next week. Um, from Georgie, why Android phones can't implement a proper software plus hardware stabilization like probably the best 4K stabilization on phone, which in my opinion right now is iPhone 6S Plus. I agree. Uh, part of the issue does actually come down to field of view, image sensor size, and how optical image stabilization is implemented. So when you have a larger sensor, you have a larger lens. To correct for handshake, that lens has to have a very wide uh, degree of movement. Um, and this is what gets LG in trouble because I think LG actually does implement the widest degree of movement on that hardware stabilization. So I think the problem Android phones run into is with the combo of hardware optical stabilization subtly warping the frame and then software stabilization, trying to crop the frame and move it to compensate for movement, you still get all of the optical distortions from the larger lens, and then you get some of the stutteriness of the software solution. I think it would make more sense for video if you could disable optical image stabilization and just go with software. I, I think that would actually ultimately prove to be a better solution uh, for video. And then you would have optical image stabilization to help for the uh, light acquisition of low light photography. So that to me, I think would be probably the, uh, the best of both worlds. Um, HTC 10 from Milky Shakes. HTC 10 is underappreciated. 
um, from Salad Tribe. What camera and lens do you use? I bounce back and forth. Most of the time, I'm on a Samsung NX30. Uh, I have the 16. I've got the 16 f 2.5. Is that what this is? 2.4, the 16 f 2.4 on there right now. And then I also have the 45 f 1.8. And I still like to play a little around with their 45 millimeter 2D, 3D lens. Uh, there's not a lot to do with 3D stuff right now. Um, then I also have their, their 5200 zoom and it's okay. The firmware on that fucked the image stabilization. And then for my Canon, I've got a Canon 7D and that thing lives almost exclusively with the 50 millimeter f 1.4. Um, I'm totally a natural light snob, um, hipster douchebag when it comes to stuff like that. Uh, what's your favorite smartphone for the camera, your favorite smartphone for audio, and your favorite smartphone all around? I don't have a favorite all-rounder. Um, I think for design, I think the Galaxy Note 4 still stands as one of my fav all-time favorite designed phones. I think for the camera... For video, it would be the LG V10. For stills, it would be the Huawei P9. And for audio, it's a toss-up between the HTC 10 and the LG V10. Um, let's see. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Got to do these more often, Juan. Thanks for the fun time. You're very welcome, Fat Produce. Mythical Snake, what is the motivation of upgrading a phone? Personally, I don't see any. There haven't been many new improvements since 2013, and most phones only last uh, one and a half years. And I don't disagree. I, I really think people are upgrading their phones now when their phones are completely dead. It's not, there's no emotional status symbol driving smartphone sales anymore. When you saw your first iPhone, you're like, oh, that's sexy. It's new. It's hip. Smartphones weren't a thing that everyone used. So there was this huge emotional component to buying the latest and greatest, the newest phone. That's gone. That's totally gone. Why, why are we even pretending like people are still making purchasing decisions that way, especially when the average length in the United States that someone's holding onto their phone is something like 26, 28 months, something like that? So it, for, for me now, I really think that people are swapping their phones, are, are waiting to swap their phones into their current phone is absolutely dead. And then it's the panic of going to their carrier store to get something new in that moment. From iEdge, what computer do you use for video editing and what program do you use? So I've got a custom-built workstation. It's a core, it's an Intel Extreme Edition Core i7, what is it, 5820K? Because I didn't really need SLI. I'm using a GTX 970 for my graphics card. I've got 64 gigabytes of RAM and then about a terabyte of solid state storage and then four terabytes of spinning disk storage, which is then networked to a NAS with another 12 terabytes in RAID 5. Um, but the programming that I'm using, I'm still using Vegas, but I'm transitioning out of Vegas and I'm going to be moving back to Premiere. Uh, can you explain what's the difference from the HDR recording on the Note 7 to the S7 or S6? The description on the camera interface is the same on all phones, 1080p for HDR recording. I don't know yet because I haven't played with the Note 7, so I can't speak to any major differences there. Um, someone... Uh, Samuel Robinson, thanks for the reply about the HTC 10. As someone working with audio, I've been impressed worth the sacrifice over a dedicated device for the convenience. And I'm in the same boat. I mean, it's good enough. And especially as I'm out and about, I'm likely to be... Uh, this is my wife calling. Hold on one second. I'm going to put her on the air. <laughs> uh, hey, babe, I'm doing a test of some live streaming software. Do you want to say hi to all the people that are watching me on YouTube right now? Hi, everybody. Hey, everybody, it's Mrs. Gadget Guy. So um, let me give you a call back. I'm actually going to be wrapping this up in just a minute. So let me give you a call back in just a few, okay? Uh, okay. All right, I love you, babe. Bye. Bye. <laughs> She's going to hate me for that. <laughs> Um, okay, let me let me wrap up a few more of these questions and I actually do need to get going. I had no intention of this being, oh, we've been recording for almost an hour 20. <gasps> That's ridiculous. Um, your thoughts on the Asus Zenfone 3 Deluxe Special Edition with Snapdragon 821 and a 23 megapixel cam. I'm reserving any thoughts until I can get my hands on one. The Zenfone Zoom was a little bit of a disappointment. Um, that had an Intel chipset, and that Zoom was innovative, but the lenses on that, the Hoya lenses, were terrible. So I, I really want to see what Asus can do with sort of more standardized phone hardware. 
Um, Edward Shapcott, what's the most compact time lapse accessory you have? So I use, oh, they're not nearby. Check out Brino. Um, uh, Edward, check out Brino. I think they make excellent time lapse gear. BW1, Juan! BW1, what's up? Um, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Lemus's Bagnell from Fat Produce. Uh, Monty, D uh, Monty Dizon, what's your daily driver out of curiosity? And that's whatever phone I'm reviewing. Um, so for the last two weeks, I've been sad to be reviewing the Sony Xperia X. And now I'm switching over into reviewing the Honor 8. So this will be the phone that I'm going to be using mostly full time. I'm stupid excited about that. Um, Praja, your wife has a great voice. <laughs> We're both uh, former theater students, so she'll be happy to hear that. Adam ZZ, thanks for your insights on the V20. Cheers. Keep up the amazing work. Thanks for tuning in, Adam. Thank you for all the questions. Uh, let's see. Um, do you really recommend the Axon? From Guillermo, do you really recommend the Axon 7? Is the audio from the headphone jack really that impressive? I need to finish up my tests on it as soon as I get it back, but from what little time I did spend with it, this will be a very competitive phone against the top tier offerings from HTC, Apple, and LG. Um, I can't give you exact numbers yet because my inter my testing got interrupted by the Note 7 launch, but I'm, I'm very positive on the Axon 7 for headphone playback. Um, I edge. Thank you so much for answering my questions. Your thoughts on technology are very smart. Keep up the great work. Thank you for tuning in. I edge, um, smartphone camera or pocket camera like Sony RX 100 or Panasonic LX 100 having in mind that in nowadays we are talking mostly for some 1080p photos, uh, Facebook, Insta, and highly c compressed 4k on YouTube. So again, it's all pros and cons. I think having just a phone these days is not necessarily a tremendous compromise. One of the things that I think you need to look at are the situations in which you might need to use something like a zoom, or you might need a higher bit rate or higher quality video to, to edit from. And then also, I mean, a standalone camera will probably be using a larger sensor for better low light sensitivity too. But our phones have become tremendously good all rounders for catching most shooting scenarios and situations. So there are a number of video reviews that I've put up where almost all of the footage has come from phones. And I just don't tell you guys, and no one seems to have noticed any significant um, degradation in video quality. Um, let's see. Uh, nagged to death by Juan jokes. Does it ever get excessive? Actually, no. I, I, I've been digging it. I, I, my entire life, I've been saddled with a name that is very punerific. <laughs> um, and Ericsson Films, what camera do you film with? Like I said, I, in, you know, I've been talking for an hour 20. Uh, this is, uh, I, I shoot mostly on an NX30, uh, this guy right here. And I'm looking to swap this out because this little guy is on its last leg. So I need to, uh, to get something else. Um from Demir Frank, what camera do you plan on switching to? I have no idea, dude. I think I might end up on a Sony. I want to go full frame, but I've, I've been holding out waiting for a camera that can do, excuse me, I've been waiting for a camera that can do UHD at 60 frames per second. And right now there's one semi-pro Panasonic that can do that. I, I, I don't know. I'm going to see if I can ride this one out for just a little bit longer. I'm, I'm just, I'm just kind of bummed uh, that we don't have that yet. So, um, folks, I think I'm going to put a pin in this. I'm going to wrap this up. I was only going to test this for just a minute to <laughs> see what the video quality would be like. And now I've got an hour of footage that I can look at. So thank you all so much for um, jumping in and participating on this ridiculous piece of live streaming testing. Uh, you know, again, for all of this, it's, it's really going to be for trying to make sure that we've got up to date and good content for uh, the Pocket Now channel. But I'm hoping to maybe do a few more silly things like this. Uh, for some gadget guide too. I keep saying that I want to come back and do producing these other things, but especially with IFA coming up, um, that's going to kick my ass. So I won't be able to, uh, to keep up with that. So, um, Thank you for s sticking with this live stream. Thank you for participating on the Some Gadget Guy YouTube channel. Thank you for jumping in on youtube.com uh, slash pocket now. And uh, I will catch you all on the next live stream. And uh, hopefully it will be just as fun and as entertaining as this one has been. And I bid you all a fantastic afternoon.